March 10, 1953. Someone off to the left of us quite a ways got hit by old Joe last night. We could hear the artillery all night long. He don't seem to bother our sector very much. Of course, he continues to take it easy. We can see the line from the top of the hill above our bunker, and about all that happens is Joe throws a couple mortar rounds now and then, so there isn't much to worry about. Heck, this isn't anything like they try to make it out in the newspapers back home. They still harass us a little, but not bad up here. We have to stay pretty well hid most of the time, as if Joe happens to see anyone, then he'll know our position. So they tell us. Personally, how can Joe see any of us when we can go up on the hill and all we can see on his hills is woods? Some of the fellows who have been online and in some of the battles haven't actually seen a Chinese. We know approximately where they are, but can't see any of them. As I've said before, this is all a big joke. The Chinese do just like we do. They lie there just waiting to see what we're going to do and our troops do the same. The commander tries to figure what they might try to do. On guard over here, we have to be pretty alert as occasionally a sniper slips around the hills and maybe raises a little trouble. As yet, we haven't had any trouble and Richard says he hasn't even known of any since he's been here, but it's better to be safe than sorry. Heck, you won't know me maybe when I get back home as I've gotten bullheaded as everything since I came over here. March 23. Well, I missed writing last night as I was out on the front line with the mortar. See, when a patrol goes out, we go up to the line and set up just behind a hilltop. Then, if the patrol runs into any trouble, we pop out a few rounds in on him, meaning old Joe. We were out all day yesterday and late last night, and our assistant gunners are out there now. Richard and I have to go out this afternoon again, and we will be there till sometime between 4 o'clock in the morning and, I would say, 6. It gets so cold just sitting there waiting. See, the patrol has a radio, and so do we. And if they need mortar fire, they call back and we pop out a few. March 27. Well, you know I told you that I was going out with my gun. Well, we did. And the next morning at around five o'clock, all hell broke loose. Old Joe was up there waiting for the patrol. So they right away called for mortar support. Well, we soon popped 73 rounds out and then, after it was all over, the boys who were out there told us that our speed and accuracy was what saved them. So you see your old hubby can do some things right. It certainly made me and Ronnie, the other gunner, feel pretty darn good when they told us that. Our lieutenant also gave us a compliment, too. Well, I guess they are going to lay low for a while, as there were four or five wounded, and two rocks killed in the fracas. So you see why I said I'm lucky to be in the mortars. We are on the other side of the hill. I didn't know it at the time, but Kim told me later that a few of Joe's mortar rounds came around us while we were firing. I was too busy to notice them. It's a good thing, or I would probably have been scared to death. April 30, 1953. I guess the truce talks are going to be the same as before, as we hear that they settled the deal on prisoners, but they can't decide on which country to use as an in-between. 
so I guess we go right on as always over here. I figured that agreement they reached was too good to keep on going. I would give anything to get out of this country for a few days. I have never been so sick of a place in my life as I am Korea. I'm looking forward to crossing the big puddle again. Boy, what a happy day that will be. If we have any baby boys, we're going to keep them hidden and not let them go out of the house. The idea of them growing up to come over to a place like this and let someone shoot at them ain't no way that will ever happen. My little Korean buddy just came down to my bunk and sat down beside me and talked a little. Then he asked me if I was writing you. He saw your picture in my wallet and he said, Joto, which in Korean means all right. So you see how nice you are. May 1. You mentioned the prisoners being released. Well, they sure are to be honored highly. They are the heroes of this fracas any way you want to look at it. I just got the address of one of my buddies who was wounded up online, so I'll have to drop him a few lines. June 30. We fired all night long last night, so I hope we will have it a little easier tonight. The rest of the company is moving out tonight, and the other company will go early in the morning. So we will be able to rest for a day or so. I am ready to go back to the rear and stay for the rest of my time over here. We haven't had a good night's sleep for two weeks, so the whole section are asleep on their feet. We will be up all night tonight again, and then we should be able to get washed up and sleep tomorrow night. That rumor about the points being lowered sort of fell through, but I still don't have too long left to go. I'm starting to get anxious again. July 13. Here we are back in the rear a little further, and so far it is so nice. We only got about two hours sleep in the last 48 hours, so you see I'm going to be ready for the sack very soon. I suppose there will be another formation before we can go to bed. It's going to be a little bothersome, but I can stand it in preference to being online. I am getting so anxious for my time to come to go home. The living quarters here are nice. They are tents with wooden floors in them and electric lights and all. That sure is a treat after living in bunkers up online. And best of all, it is so quiet back here. July 15. Some of the wheels we have been talking with here talk as though the truce talks will be closed soon. I sure hope so. I guess Sigmund Rhee has agreed to sign now, so that at least sounds good. Well, keep your fingers crossed, and I don't think I'll see the front lines again. Or, if I do, it won't be but a very short time. So you can sort of stop worrying now. You have been good at hiding it, but your old hubby can read between the lines in most of your letters. You never know how much I appreciate and love you for being so loving and dependable while we have been so far from each other. You have been very brave about everything. September 18. You ask in your letter where I'm at. Well, the place we are in now is about 60 miles north of Seoul on Route 3. That's as near as I can tell you. There are no more little villages here hardly anymore. The few that were around are no more. So maybe you can figure just about where I am from Seoul. I sent you a map of Korea some time ago, and you could probably tell on it approximately where we are now. Oh, I forgot that we are a little ways from Pyongyi. I suppose it's about 10 miles from here, or something like that. 
To be truthful, I don't know half the time where we are.